Welcome to chapter 54. Uh, chapter 54, I would honestly say, is one of my um, absolute favorite chapters. Super interesting to think about what animals can do to um, in a community setting. So that being said, chapter 54 is about community ecology. And when we define a community, that's going to be a bunch of different species living together. So remember, before we talked about a population, that was a subgroup of a species. Now we're talking about a community, and that's a bunch of species living together. So when we look at a community, and this is something we talked about when we did the Borneo project, is communities are going to have two things that we can look at, their species richness and their abundance. So um, this isn't the best picture here, but um, you can, if you counted how many trees were in each of these examples, they're actually the same amount. So they have the same abundance, which is just total number. But um, if we look at species richness, you can see that this one looks a little bit more diverse than this one, and this one has what's called species dominance going on over here. So um, species richness has to do with the diversity of species, how many different species are in your area. And the reason that's important to look at is because let's say we counted 86,000 fish, but they were all one type of fish, that's not very diverse, right? So you want to have a species richness to tell you about diversity. All right. So interspecific interactions. This is a huge section and super fun. So these are going to be relationships that organisms can have with each other. So that could be competition, predation, parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. So those last two you may not have heard of before, but those are vocab words we're going to go over later in this chapter. <clears throat> so interspecific competition is talking about when you've got a resource that's in short supply, and all of a sudden you've got two organisms that need that resource. So they're going to compete. Now, Anytime you have a limited resource, that's going to happen. And there are some ideas about that. And one that's really important to understand is the competitive exclusion principle. And that's basically saying if you have two species that have that same need for that same resource, then one of them is either going to go extinct or it's going to have to move out of the area because of pressure. So it's not like they're going to sit there and say like, hey, do you want the grass this day and then I'll take it on Thursday? Like that doesn't work. So um, competitive exclusion means that they are going to be um, fighting basically for that resource until finally someone has to die or take off. <clears throat> okay. Now, a word we're going to use a lot in this class is ecological niche, and that's going to be everything an organism needs. So it would just be like if you thought about um, getting a fish in an aquarium and you're, you have nothing at home, right? You have to think about, I got to get them a tank. I got to find out what kind of gravel they like. I want to see if they need a little house to live in underwater. What's the pH of the water they like? Can they get along with other fish? All of that is looking at the ecological niche kind of thing. So you're looking at biotic and abiotic factors, right? So an, organi an organism's niche is going to be its role in the environment. So that's kind of like the role that it plays. Is it a predator? Is it prey? And obviously it can fit into those categories more than once or in more than one category. So going back to this competitive exclusion principle, we could say if you have two species with identical niches, they can't coexist in the same place. That should make sense, right? Okay, now here's the exceptions to the rules. Resource partitioning. So what can happen is sometimes you can have two species that are trying to coexist and it's just not working. And so what they're going to do is specialize so that they can coexist. So I've got a picture here of these barnacles. So you've probably seen barnacles, like they grow on like sea walls and docks and boats and things. And they're, they like to live between the high tide and the low tide line. Well, what happened with these two species is they did both like to live between high tide and low tide. But what happened is this blue version right here decided to take the lower part of the high tide, low tide area. And then this one here, the brown one, decided to take the higher part of the high tide, low tide area. So they're still technically living between high and low tide. It's just that this one's more towards the bottom and this one's more towards the top. So that's going to be resource partitioning. All right. Now, another thing that you want to think about with this stuff is going to be the fact that <clears throat> if you have two species living in the same area, so they once were one species and now they've branched into two species but they're still right there. Hopefully you remember that that's called sympatric speciation. And so 
what happens with sympatric speciation is when they are in that little area together, there's going to be a lot of pressure for them to be as different from each other as they can because that will make their lives easier, right? So character displacement right here is a tendency for characteristics to be more divergent or different in sympatric populations, all living in one area of two species, than allopatric uh, populations, which are ones that have been separated, right? So the reason for that is because the ones that are still right next to each other, there's a lot of pressure for them to be different from one another because of that direct competition. So that's called character displacement. Okay. <clears throat> This next part, we're going to talk about relationships. So we'll start out with talking about um, predation, um, and we'll actually do that in the next video because this is going to be a little bit of a chunk.